Okay, so my name is Amy Brait. This is Teach Your Client to Speak Drupal. Um, <clears throat> I've been around Drupal for a long time. Uh, I've started back probably around 2008. Uh, for anyone who is interested in such things, I started with version 4.7. Um, if you go to my LinkedIn, you'll see that I have been away for a bit and I'm coming back into Drupal. And um, this presentation came out of some conversations I had at the last DrupalCon. A uh, quick shout out to our sponsors. Uh, these kinds of events could not happen without sponsorship, so we always are very appreciative of what they contribute. Uh, so, what's the problem? What are we talking about today? Uh, way back when, I did end user training, uh, and one of the things that we were seeing was that people really weren't comfortable with the tools they were given. And so this was something that we started working on and figuring out what was going on and why this was happening. And um, we came to the conclusion that we were seeing that in these processes, we were putting a lot of effort into understanding the audiences and the visitors. There's market segmentation and end user research and test groups and lots of design work and this and that. There was also a lot going into the system architecture and optimization and, and the, the surrounding DevOps and things like that. But we were still falling kind of short on what we were giving to the internal end users who were supposed to use these wonderful tools to create these amazing experiences. And it wasn't because of we weren't trying. I mean, in the worst cases, people were just getting whatever default administrative interfaces were tacked onto the front end functionality. But that wasn't always the case. And even though good effort was going into it and we really wanted to make amazing things for clients, it was still kind of falling short. And what I found recently, talking to people at DrupalCons and following conversations on LinkedIn and chatting here, it's still happening. You know, we have better processes now. We have better baseline user interfaces in Drupal. It's, come, it's hugely improved, but it's still very often still falling short. So what's going wrong? So when we think about Drupal, we love Drupal. Drupal is powerful, it's flexible, it's extensible, it's community driven, it does all these amazing things and it's managed by these wonderful people. But when somebody first meets Drupal, some other words come to mind. It's complicated, it's intimidating, it's confusing, and there's all this strange language around it. And when people have these feelings about technology, they tend to withdraw and pull back and kind of shut down. It becomes very difficult to communicate effectively. And when there's jargon, forget it, you're not even speaking the same language. When we have unfamiliar jargon, people get alienated. Even though we're trying to do something for them and create something for them, they're still getting shut out of the conversation because they can't fully participate. They don't have the same language. So who are we talking about? We're talking about the non-technical stakeholders. These are the people putting in the content, managing the content, um, doing day-to-day -day tasks with the system. Uh, to make it a little more concrete, we have a persona. It's, we're talking about Mary. Uh, she is an academic administrative, administrative assistant. Uh, she's not totally unfamiliar with content management systems. She's updated some blog pages in the past and she's fine with that. Uh, in her job, she uses the CMS to update things like faculty profiles, course listings, event postings, things like that. Um, she hasn't had the greatest experience with technology in her role. They had a big email rollout, email system rollout last year, and it was just, it was a mess. It created all kinds of headaches. She couldn't get things done. It was very frustrating. And she hasn't had the best experiences with the campus IT. Um, there are some particular people there that she has felt kind of talked down to her and don't take her concerns seriously, so she's kind of disaffected by that. Um, and she just has ways to wish to do. She doesn't have time to mess around. She just wants to get her job done and move on. So she's not super enthusiastic about this whole idea. So what happens when we talk to Mary about the requirements? Uh, well, we come into the, the set, the discovery meeting. Um, 
We find, talk about what her day-to-day -day tasks look like and how she's doing things now and what's working and not working. And then we make some suggestions about how we can make it better. And we talk through this and we say, how does that sound? Okay, that sounds good, I, I think. She can't really give any effective feedback because she doesn't have the tools to do that. She's never seen Drupal. She doesn't know what any of these things we're talking about look like from her perspective. She doesn't have the language to talk about it. Um, and she doesn't have any reason to trust us. We're just another group of technical consultants coming in to dump some new technology on her to figure out, and this hasn't gone so well in the past. When somebody's coming in without the tools that they need, their participation is very limited. And as a result, they don't get what they need, and we can't really sort out what they need until later in the process after we've built some things and put it in front of them, and then find out, oh, here's what's going on. We have to adjust course after we've already put this work in. On the business side, it can have lasting impacts. The tools aren't as effective as they could have been. Um, the things they were trying to achieve with this new system in terms of their operations and their content, it doesn't happen as, it doesn't go as well as it could because the people doing the work with the tools, the, the tools are getting in their way. Um, their users are frustrated and ultimately they're, they're not as satisfied as they could be. Nobody's happy, nobody came into the project to end up in that place. So what do we do? Um, this is something, this is the thing I was working on when I was doing training and I got to do a little bit of this before. And my suggestion is pre-discovery education. Get the non-technical stakeholders who are actually going to be using the tools, get them together in a room, introduce them to the things that are useful for them to know about Drupal before they're in the big meeting talking about project requirements. And when we can do that, we can get so much further with our discovery because now everybody's communicating more effectively and understanding each other. And we can avoid the situation where we build the wrong thing and then try to turn it into the right thing after the fact. It also has a good emotional and psychological effect because now instead of being given this thing that they have to use, they're more engaged in creating it. It's more collaborative, they have more ownership over the finished product, and their voice is actually represented in the process. So what do we wanna teach non-technical stakeholders? It's not the same as talking to the technical team. Um, we wanna tread carefully, Drupal is big, it's complex, there are a lot of ways you could go in trying to talk to someone about Drupal. Really focus on the need to know. What parts of Drupal are relevant to what they are actually going to do with it? Um, and then also, secondarily, give some attention to more technical terms that they're likely to hear in the conversation so they're not distracting. Don't dwell on them, but just a, a quick little explanation. This is what a module is. When somebody talks about contrib, they're talking about this pool of code that's already been made that we can work from for our features. Um, that level of introduction. So some do's and don'ts. Really focus on the relevant parts. Filter out anything that they don't need to know about uh, because that just makes it more confusing. <laughs> uh, where possible, get visual. Um, do short, limited scope demos of things they can get excited about. You know, there are some really fantastic tools for editors and content creators to you know, manage images quickly and easily. Um, you know, various features like that, depending on their role and what kind of system they're coming from. Let them get their hands on it, but again, very limited scope. Don't ask them to build a content type. <laughs> Um, just let them play with the cool stuff. Um, and keep in mind what you didn't know before you knew it. You can't make any assumptions about what people already know when they come into these discussions. Uh, don't teach them to install, build, or configure Drupal. They don't want to do it. They don't want to know. 
Uh, don't get too heavy with the demos. Keep them brief and simple. Uh, don't assign complex hands-on tasks. And don't show them tools they won't use. Your administrative assistant doesn't need to know how to configure roles and permissions. Uh, we're not teaching them how to do Drupal. We're teaching them how to think and talk about what they can do with Drupal. They don't need to master anything. It just needs to be familiar. Some communication tips. Uh, really think about who you're talking to. Uh, the jobs, obviously. What do they do in their jobs? But also, what might be going on in their heads? What, what kind of anxieties and concerns are they bringing into this process? Uh, also be mindful of where they are in the organizational structure. If you have people in a room with their bosses, <laughs> they might feel a little intimidated in saying, hey, you know what, I don't quite get this. Can, can we talk about this some more? Because they don't want to look like they don't get it. And be very aware of noise. When we talk about noise, we're talking about the things that are kind of creating their personal context. This, this, all this other stuff in their head that is affecting how they're receiving whatever message you're trying to give them. Uh, if they've had bad experiences with technology, if they have had trouble learning to use the technology or they have no idea what they're getting into, um, if they've had bad consequences for getting involved, for making suggestions, for disagreeing with someone, um, that's going to affect how they interact and receive your message. And microaggressions and bias. If, if they're in an environment where they don't feel like they're on equal footing, that's going to change how they receive things. Uh, there could be some very difficult feelings around this kind of a project. They're big, they're mysterious, they're potentially difficult to learn and adapt into their daily routines. We need to be mindful of that. Not everybody is, yay, let's do Drupal. Uh, other potential challenges in different brains. <laughs> uh, if you have more than seven or eight people in a room, you probably have somebody who has some different form of learning, neurodivergence. They're going to process things differently. Uh, general insecurities, everybody has them. Um, other things just going on outside of the discussion, outside of their job. You know, what, what's going on with their kids? What's going on with their parents? What, what's going on with their financial situation or anything else that's buzzing around in their brain and really feels more important than what you're talking about right now? Sometimes when we're trying to make something feel better, we'll say things like, oh, it's just do this. This is really simple. You do this. And that's intuitive, but if you say, hey, this is really simple, let me show you, and they still don't understand, that can really backfire. And now they feel like, well, if this is simple and I don't get it, what's wrong with me? I just can't do this. And two of my least favorite words at work are just and simply. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Expunge those. Never say them. Uh, look for other ways to ask if they understand. We're kind of conditioned to want to say yes. We want to be positive. We want to be affirmative. We also don't want to be the only one who says no. So if you just straight out ask, okay, everybody understand? You're going to get a bunch of nodding heads. Uh, that's not good feedback. So consider using declarative language or nonverbal signals. By declarative language, I mean forming your message as a sentence as opposed to a question. So instead of putting it on them, do you have any questions, put it on yourself. I wonder what else I should spend some more time on. And then people pop up with suggestions. Um, and then there's also just more passive ways of communicating. Instead of using words, to say, hey, raise your hand if you'd like to spend some more time on this. And then if you see hands, okay, great. Before I get back into it, do we have any specific questions? So it's not putting it on them to say, I don't get it. And then get off the screen and do something familiar. Have something that's not on the computer, it's not on the projection screen. 
It doesn't directly involve the technology. Um, and the idea that I had for this is to create a Drupal jargon crossword. Uh, it sounds silly, but it's also something familiar and low pressure that anybody can follow along with. Um, and the idea here is to have something that they can just have in front of them, and as you go through and you introduce your Drupal jargon that you want them to learn, you fill in the boxes. And so it's just like bingo. You can or, have like bingo. Or bingo. Yeah. Bingo would have been a good one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, something like that, something silly and lightweight, um, but just it also introduces more uh, senses to the learning process. Instead of just seeing it on the screen and hearing it, you know, you're using your hands, you're writing it, you're getting that tactile connection with the information. Um, so I have. Let me see this. Yeah. Okay, so let me get into where is my crossword. Um, so I found a generator, and what we want to do with it is brainstorm some Drupal jargon, and then we can fill it out, and it will actually create the crossword for us. Is this it? This is it. So right now, it is empty. We're not seeing it on the screen. Yeah. There you right. go. The monitor is reversed over here. Okay. Yeah. Drag it the wrong way. Okay, so for example, one term might be content type. Uh, what would be another term? Module. Module. Theme. Block. differentiation. Taxonomy. Yes. Role. Vocabulary and term. Yeah, role. He just said role. Yeah, let me get caught up. I was just trying to deliver a burrito. Oh, <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, permissions. Permissions. Uh, let's get two more. Oh yeah, paragraphs. Paragraphs. Yeah. Um, layout. Yeah. You want layout or layout builder? Good question. Um, layout builder, probably. Yeah. Okay. And then we need to fill in definitions. These are our oh. clues for the crossword. So content type. Thinking more of the like seek and find where you like circle the words. Oh, like a word yeah. search? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this sure. is fun too. Um, I, I can look for one. There's probably a word search generator. How about, but, uh, no, I, I, I can see this though. Like if you say, yeah. like, you know, an article or an event, there might be better ways to do this, but yeah. maybe. This feels like it requires <laughs> some brains. Yes. How, how Drupal structures content items how types uh, how they well, well, yeah but the term is content type yeah, 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 <laughs> I'm yeah, trying yeah, to yeah. find a different word <laughs> um, uh, um, it's hard to... okay well let's skip that one for now module a group of code This is hard. <laughs> it is hard. See, this is why we need to do this ahead of time. Yes. Uh, let's see here. Um, I have to I'm trying not to use other words because like, I'm going to say code component, but that's, you know, I'm trying to find a word that's not protected. Functionality. 
Okay. So and then theme, I guess we could go extension that controls display or something like that. I just always say it's the pretty part. <laughs> uh, so defines display. Here it goes into entities. Yeah, right, what's the difference that's between like an entity right. and a node? I mean, yeah. Those are kind of different. I don't know how you would definitely define that. I feel like you kind of have to mention, you know, things like content types, taxonomies, users, and blocks yeah. to, to belong to this because it's, it's such a generic word. Yeah. Other displayable data. Piece. Hmm. I mean, it's like another piece of content, but like not. <laughs> it's it's like content, but it's not. Yeah. yeah. Mm. We have to get all of them done. You know what? Let's take entity out of there because it is so. It's not something I would normally tricky. say to the client. I, I would. Yeah. Say. Yeah. Because right. they don't care whether it's an entity. Um, you know, we talk a lot about nodes, because it's like, that's what they look at. Um, mm, term would be? Like a specific mm, taxonomy. A taxonomy tag? Yeah. Vocabulary is a set of related taxonomy tags. Okay, we don't have to fill out this whole entire thing. Yeah. It's more the process. And what yeah. we get... Let's see what happens. Yeah. So we get oh. something like this. And we can print it and download it. Uh, there is an answer key. And it's just a really easy little handout that we can give people in these kinds of training sessions to just help them collect, connect a little better and do something familiar. Um, and has something to take away as kind of a reference. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, so that's that's what I'm advocating for, is uh, to get some pre-discovery education going for our non-technical stakeholders, make it easier for them to participate more effectively in discovery conversations, and uh, make it easier for us to understand what they really want from us and what will make their jobs better. That's what I've got. <laughs> thank you. Hey, thank you. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. I will. So, I have a question on you know yeah. back there when you were saying they may have feelings, you know, uh, coming into the process. Yeah. And how do you maybe find out of that? You know, how do you uh, do? You have any thoughts on how you would find out those if they have those kind of feelings? Like, like Mary had the feelings of like. Oh, we had this really terrible rollout. Yeah. You have well, that's kind of another even... benefit of the pre-discovery education yeah. is it's a chance to talk about things in a safer environment, mm -hmm. or at least something that feels safer. Uh, they're not facing their bosses and the tech team and the agency team and worrying about how they sound or sounding like a team player. Uh, when I was able to do this in the past, what I found is that at the beginning, people tended to be really reserved, um, sometimes even slightly hostile, <laughs> uh, and not happy about things. But by the end, the conversation relaxes, uh, and they start talking to each other, and they start getting into ideas, and some of the tricky stuff just dissipates because it starts to feel more relaxed. But also, it's a chance, if they have something to say, they can say it. Mm -hmm. no, nobody is listening to what they're saying going, hmm, this person is not really a team player. They're not really getting on board with this. 
it, it's not that kind of environment. And so let's some of that get worked through before it's in the more tense situation. So yeah, kind of like a one-on-one, -on -one, you know. Yeah, it's meeting. more relaxed, it's more casual, yeah. it's more, here's the ideas that we're bringing and these tools that we want to work with. And they also have a chance to bring their thoughts and their ideas and their feelings and their concerns. You know, last time we did one of these big tech things, it, I didn't even know what to do. You know, how, how are we going to get through this? How do we not have that happen again? Because I, I can't keep interrupting my job to learn a new system. Yeah. And then, can you go back to the slide? Um, let's see. So I was thinking about, uh, so you were, the, you had ways to understand. So um, I find it's harder because, you know, when I started doing online training, mm -hmm. and especially when I don't have them all on camera, mm -hmm. and then it's like, silent <laughs> and and I'm like uh, mm -hmm. does the silence mean it's okay or the silence means you don't get it or you know what is I mean do you have any thoughts on that as far as yeah it, with that kind of a format I would say use that anonymous chat window uh -huh. you know have some poll questions just to say hey I want to do a check-in what are people's thoughts on this and just encourage people to engage with it in general so when they have a thought in their head they can just type it in. Their name's not on it. There's no pressure. Nobody knows who said it or asked it. Um, and it's just, it's an easy way. And then they don't have to turn on their mic and interrupt and put their hand up and, you know. Chat windows are great. Yeah, I find it a little harder. It's distracting for me if I'm training. But if you yeah. build in the breaks that way, because otherwise I'm like, oh, you know, or I'm not either watching that or mm -hmm. I'm distracted by it. So, it helps to have a partner monitoring the yeah, chat. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? No, nope, very helpful. Mm -hmm. All right, here, let me rephrase. I wonder <laughs> if there's anything else we should talk about before we finish. No, it's been very helpful. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs>